Hello everybody. First of all, thanks to one and all for your appreciation and your support. In this part of management of crown fractures, I'll be dealing with the procedures of pulp capping, pulpotomy, pulpectomy and apexification. And those of you who've come to this channel for the first time, do check out other videos on trauma and subscribe to this channel. Let's go ahead with this one. We'll begin with complicated crown fractures. These are those fractures which involve the enamel, dentine and the pulp. Now, how do we decide which treatment to choose for a particular patient? There are certain factors which help us to do that. First is the age. Now, the patient age helps to determine the root apex completion. For example, a patient comes to you, he's seven years of age. The treatment that we choose for him will be different from that of a patient who's 13 years of age because the first patient's root apex will be immature and in the second patient, the root apex would be mature. The next factor is the time. Now, time passed since the injury is very important. Say if the patient reports to you within first one hour of the injury, then the prognosis is the best. If he reports within 24 hours, even then the prognosis is good. Now, after 24 hours, as the time keeps on passing, the prognosis, it starts getting compromised. Then injury. Now, the extent of the injury, how much is the tooth damaged? Now, it definitely influences the treatment that you would choose and the future progresses. Then the contamination. The level of contamination of the injury site greatly influences how well the tooth would heal. I mean, how its prognosis would be. So all these are the factors which have to be kept in mind when we choose our treatment option. While you are here, do subscribe to this channel and we proceed on. There are different treatment options which are available to us. The first one is pulp capping and pulpotomy. Now, when do we use these procedures? Under two circumstances. First, the young patient is young and the root apex is immature. The pulp vitality can be preserved and which would further help to stimulate root formation and this procedure is called apexogenesis. Second situation, the patient is young with completely formed root apex but the pulp vitality can be preserved. So that's the time when we choose these two options. Next is pulpectomy with apexification. Now when do we do this? Now if we have a young patient with an immature root apex but the pulp vitality cannot be preserved. Here, the pulp is removed, medicaments are placed in the canal to help stimulate root formation and this procedure is called apexification. The next option is, in a patient with mature root apex, we can go in for root canal treatment which is followed by, by post and core or crown or reattachment of the crown fragment. Finally, if the tooth cannot be saved, we have to go in for extraction. Now coming to treatment of crown fracture by pulp capping. Its indications are very small exposure soon after the injury, possibly within first 24 hours. And that's the time when we can choose it for pulp capping. The procedure is very simple. You isolate the pulp exposure. Now this is the pulp exposure here. And you place a layer of calcium hyoxide on it and you restore it with a bacteria tight seal and send the patient back. This is the first option. Now the second option, in case we want to reassess the case because we are not very sure whether the heart tissue barrier would be formed or not. This normally happens if the exposure size is slightly larger. What do we do? We recall the patient after three months. We remove this restoration and we check for the dentine formation here, reparative dentine formation here. In case we see that it is intact, it is well formed, we will replace it with a layer of calcium hyoxide followed by a final restoration with GIC or composite. The treatment of crown by partial pulpotomy, the indications are a larger pulp exposure with longer post-trauma intervals. That means longer than 24 hours. Now another condition is that the pulp of this tooth should be free of inflammation before the injury. Also, after the injury, the vascular supply to the pulp should not have been affected. It is only under these two conditions will the treatment of partial pulpotomy be successful. The procedure for partial pulpotomy involves, first you administer local anesthesia, isolate the tooth with the rubber dam. Pulpotomy is carried out to a depth of 2 mm 
using an inverted cone bird. This is a depth of 2 mm. Now the axis cavity of the pulpotomy site is shaped like that of a box, like you can see it here. Now whatever bleeding happens, it is controlled with slight pressure applied to a cotton pellet, applied with a cotton pellet. And after the complete arrest of bleeding, calcium hydroxide paste is placed like this and glass enamel or composite restoration is placed on top of it. So this is how you do partial pulpotomy. Now coming to the situation where the pulp vitality cannot be preserved, we perform procedure known as pulpectomy. In this procedure, there is the complete removal of the pulp from the root canal. Now in case the tooth is immature, that means the root apex is not formed, then after pulpectomy, we perform apexification. Now what is that? It is the method to induce development of the root apex by the formation of calcific barriers, where an immature pulpless tooth and how with the help of medicaments. Now which are these medicaments? Popularly used materials are calcium hydroxide paste and mineral trioxide aggregate. Now let me explain perplectomy procedure to you. It is very simple. First you prepare the axis cavity like this. You can see it in the diagram. Axis cavity is prepared. Then the roof of the pulp chamber is removed from here and the coronal pulp is removed. What is coronal pulp? Coronal pulp is the pulp that is present inside the crown of the tooth. Now this pulp is removed with help of an instrument called endodontic spoon excavator. You can see it here. Now we use this instrument to remove the coronal pulp. Now after we have removed the entire coronal pulp, what do we do next? We locate the root canal opening. Now it is marked with yellow color and we do it with help of endodontic explorer. It's a thin, sharp instrument, you can see, and it is used to locate the root canal opening. Now, after the root canal opening has been found, what we do is we check for the canal patency with help of endodontic explorer or a smooth brooch. We can insert it inside and check the canal patency. Next step, we take a barbed brooch. And what is a barbed brooch? Well, barbed brooch is an instrument like this. It is made up of thin soft iron wire in which angle cuts are made to produce barbs. These are small projections. They are known as barbs. So we take this instrument called barbed brooch and we insert it inside the canal fully. Once it is inserted, we rotate it by 360 degree to engage the entire pulp tissue and we pull it out. And as we pull it out, the pulp tends to come out and our objective is to remove the pulp in a single go. In case it does not, we can repeat the process. Now when pulp is taken out, bleeding gets induced. Now this bleeding can be controlled by using copious irrigation with sodium hypochlorite solution and then drying with absorbent paper points. So now when we have removed the entire pulp from the pulp chamber and the root canal, that means pulpectomy has been done. Once pulpectomy is over, we proceed towards apexification. Now in this, what we do is we place the material like calcium hydroxide or milium trioxide aggregate in the empty canal space, making sure it comes in contact with the periapical tissue as well. Now this is placed in the canal and it is sealed with a temporary material or intermediate restorative material. And the patient is asked to go back. He is recalled after three months to check for the root apex formation. I would like to explain it with help of a case. A 10 year old reported to the clinic with a history of fall. It was a complicated crown fracture. You can see enamel, dentine, pulp or are involved and quite a bit of crown structure is lost. A pre-operative x-ray was taken. It revealed that the root apex is incompletely formed. Now it is seen here. Now this root canal was cleaned, shaped and nicely prepared. Once it was prepared, it was filled with mineral trioxide aggregate to induce apexification. The patient was sent back and he was recalled. After three months, an x-ray was taken and the x-ray revealed that the root apex has got formed nicely and hence apexification has got induced here. Since the root apex is formed, therefore obturation was done with gatta parcha. And then post space was prepared like this. Post space is prepared here. And this 
fiber post is placed inside the canal. This is a fiber post. Now on this fiber post, core was built here followed by crown placement. Now you can see in this slide, composite core have was built here on the fiber post that we had placed and crown was given. So in this case, we first performed pulpectomy procedure followed by apexification. Then we proceeded with the root canal treatment and then we prepared a post, gave a core and on that we placed a crown. So all these procedures were done in this particular case. This is a case in which reattachment of crown was done. Let's discuss it. An 18 year old patient reported with a history of trauma, a recent one about two hours ago. Now clinical examination revealed that there was fracture in the cervical one third area of the crown. Now on the lingual side, however, the tooth was still attached with the help of a thin layer of enamel. Now this crown was temporarily stabilized with help of composite and an access cavity was made on the lingual side to open the root canal. Now this x-ray reveals this crown, it is temporarily stabilized here. Access cavity is made. This is a file placed in the root canal. Now the working length of this canal was taken. The canal was prepared nicely. It was obturated. After the obturation was completed, the coronal segment of the crown was removed. Now the post space was prepared in the root canal. You can see here post space has been prepared in the root canal. Next, a metal post was placed in the canal and it was cemented with the help of dual core composite. Post space was prepared in the crown as well and the crown was then fitted on the post. You can see it here. And you can see how nicely the outcome has come out and the patient went back pretty happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed your lecture. The next video will be on crown root fractures and root fractures. The links to other lectures on trauma have been given in the description box below. In case you're interested, you can check on them. And do subscribe to this channel to continue receiving regular updates. Thank you.